Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Lancer Custom Works, where I will be discussing the various mech builds you could make and play with Lancer. Tokugawa, is insane, it has one specialty, do more damage, do big damage, do absolutely redonkulous level of damage, and those damage, are also burn, that's a lot of damage, the problem, you need to be exposed for all this damage, which to be honest is a rather small cost. Another thing about Toku is that it also has more range, whether threat, or actual range, that's right, you might look at the artwork and think Tokugawa is a dedicated melee machine, but no, like real life samurai, Toku fucking loves guns. The only big issue with Tokugawa is that it doesn't have a heavy mount, but honestly, if it has one, it's going to limit break the limit break. In the following 40 Tokugawa builds, you will find a lot of torches because lightsaber is fucking awesome, plenty of external batteries for plenty of range, deep well heat sink because Tokugawa is going to cook itself frequently, and Lucifer, because more damage. But yes, I'm just as sad as you to find out that there aren't many builds that embrace the glory of plasma gauntlets, and annihilators I guess. As expected, a lot of the builds are either striker or artillery, with a minor mix of controller, defender, and support, because Tokugawa is so good at damage that going all in is perfectly worth it. So of course, we are going to talk about the striker Tokugawa first. This is radiant like a dying star, a very normal Tokugawa with three freaking torches, this is basically how Toku build is generally gonna work like, just stack a whole bunch of bonus damage source like nuclear cavalier, OP caliber, thermal charge, crack shot, lucifer, and when you hit, whatever you hit is gonna lit up like a bonfire. And 16 heat cap, that's a lot of heat for lucifer, and that's a lot of damage. And if you feel like it, you can always plasma gauntlet some very unfortunate fellow, and even if you stress, and you will in a Toku, explosive vent is there to set anyone nearby on more fire. And yes, you are going to see Lucifer a lot, this is Kagi Tsuchi, another Lucifer Toku that goes full anime with Jaeger Kus 2 and Terashima Blade. Pairing that with Heat Fall Overcharge Loop, and you will get a lot of cut out of the blade very quickly. And this is Mirage, another Lucifer Tokugawa, except it can also fly and turn invisible, invisibility is also a very good way to provide defense for Tokugawa when it's exposed, or basically what you call Toku Normal Mode, 50% more damage, just make sure you get hit 50% less, and with deep well, it can stay in danger zone for just a bit longer. But if you are really worried about getting hit, just make that impossible in the first place. This is I can't spell this, a lucifer toku with fade cloak, allowing it to phase between reality and turn into a ghost, making any attack impossible for your enemy and you, so keep that in mind. With the usual black thumb techno file combo, this toku won't need to worry about heat that much, especially on top of deep well, and with external batteries, all those melee weapons are going to have very long threat when this toku opens up its core power. And with Gaiji's frame, that's gonna be a plus 5 increase to threat, this is problem solver, and those plasma cutters it has are going carve through wall and people like nothing else. That mortar, thanks to toku's traits and external batteries, is going to have a ridiculous 30 range, can you see why toku is quite good as an artillery too now, even its backup weapons are going to benefit a lot from the range increase. And if you really need it, you can attach a cable winch to a target to make sure they can't run away from you, or at the very least, run away with you. And as the ultimate accumulation of that concept, this is the third impact lance, which have three threat eight impact lance with core active, good luck avoiding all those energy lances, super massive even keeps things away. Heat fall OC loop gives even more action to attack, and hardpoint reinforcement gives you some helpful resistance on your turn so enemy reaction fire should mostly not be a problem. Also, grease monkey, because you are in a toku and if nobody can support you, you need to support yourself, also you might need more lucifer charges. Anyway let's talk about something else, this is overcharge every turn, I wonder why it's called that, it's a titan omichi dualist brawler toku with synthetic muscle netting so get ready for some grappler action to burn and smash the hell out of people. Remember. Limit break applies to all ranged and melee attacks, including ramming, which you can spam, for a lot of damage, but plasma sheath won't work with it because it specifies that it needs a weapon, so no extra burn. This is Fishing Planet, a Tokugawa with a possibly 18 to 28 range croil rifle, good luck running away from this thing. 
Also Vanguard, so anyone that gets close is going to get shot, and while walking armory is still useful, most people use walking armory for the hellfire option, so it's less useful on a Tokugawa. And this is nuclear pile bunker Toku, which has a catalytic hammer that thanks to Roland Chamber, nuclear cavalier, and OP caliber, is going to hit very hard. With Titanomachi dualist siege ram combo for lots of damage, and enough heat cap for a OC stabilized loop, this hammer is gonna hit very often. This is Pool Shark, a thermal pistol spam Tokugawa, multi-hit weapon deals have bonus damage, but half of 3 is still 2, and since Gunslinger charges off each hit from the pistol, you will get very frequent big damage from the talent. Stick close to something or move fast, and you will get a lot of defense from Flicker Field, Type 3 Shield, and Combined Arms. Also Autopod, in case some lock-on get consumed for even more damage. This is Lessons in Anger Management, and Azura Tokugawa for even more action. With Redundant Systems Upgrade, if you don't want your Toku to be exposed immediately, a quick action will quickly solve it. Stub Cannons can easily keep thing away, and with Heat Fall, you can overcharge cheaply for more actions as well. And finally, this is Hiken, a dual DSAS Tokugawa with no Vanguard, why? Anyway, once this thing gets close, and it will with its speed, jump jet, and skirmisher, it can slash and siege ram the hell out of target with its torch, then just blast so many bloody buckshots with uncle for so much damage, and since there's no bonus damage restriction with uncle and integrated mount, that's also a lot of burn. And if you are thinking wow, Tokugawa striker build are really powerful, you are correct, Tokugawa basically deal double the damage of other frames, at the cost of taking twice the damage, but it does give out so much damage that you can have no brain all damage builds and still have it works very effectively, when it doesn't miss. Give your Toku allies a lot of support, and they will wipe out the map very easily. Anyway, let's talk about the other Tokugawa striker builds, mixed with controller and support roles. This is from the far reaches of hell, a Tokugawa that decided that its enemy should move closer to it and not the other way around, with ferrous lash and magnetic cannon to help with that. It also has a fuel rod gun, thanks to nuclear cavalier 3, most Toku builds only have NC2, which helps with cooling down, because let's be honest, 10 heat cap is not enough for Toku. Oh yeah, and I really should talk about Annihilator, it's kinda a weird blast weapon, thanks to its strange gimmicky mechanic, but it's armor piercing, and with Tokugawa's traits and external batteries, it can reach a staggering 15 to 20 range from its original 5, massively increasing its effectiveness, but it's just overshadowed by a lot of things, like Torch, because 3 burn. This is Flaming Dragon Choke Slam, a bristle crown Toku, very simple, you hug someone and explode until they die, you have ferrous lash to yeet people closer to you, and smoke charges for more cover. Moving on to the support, this is what's the worst that could happen, a normal Tokugawa with some support tools duct taped to it. Plasma Cutter is just very good at cutting up both people and cover, also give off heat and burn on its own before limit break. Asso is good at providing over shield and support, while Wandering Nightmare stops reaction enemy like Archer to just stop fucking function. And finally, this is the Iron Giant, apparently an alternative version where Iron Giant decided that it's both a gun and a crazy taxi driver because of course there's gonna be a Famarayan Mule Taxi Tokugawa, not only that, a flying Famarayan Mule Taxi Tokugawa with full ace talent for Super Sonic, so if you have a very fast ally moving ahead, you can just chase them while carrying the rest of the party. You also have Whitewash Spray too, very ironically, put out burn or slow down people. And that's basically all of the striker builds, most of them are just complete brute force builds made for total annihilation. Now, let's move on to the artillery Tokugawa builds. This is let's just pretend I'm not naked over here, a smart gun auto gun spamming Tokugawa, sure, external batteries only work with weapon that deals energy damage, but thanks to limit break, that's not a problem, so all those super accurate seeking guns have range increase to 25 or 30, dealing ridiculous damage with Crackshot and Lucifer, the sheer distance alone provides safety to the artillery Toku, and it is in fact how most artillery Toku works. This is They Call Me Mr. Fahrenheit, a dual fusion rifle Tokugawa, both of which are now smart and seeking, and since fusion rifle automatically deal 6 damage and more beyond range 6, which they now have up to range 21, that's gonna hurt a lot. On top of that it has heat fall for cheap overcharge, for even more shot fired. Not enough range, add siege stabilizer for plus 5, now these auto gun can reach a staggering 30 to 35, while the light nexus can reach 25 to 30. 
You want even more range but without immobilizing yourself, get Neuralink for plus 3, and then poke the hell out of the enemies with a bunch of range 33 Oracle or Smart Gun, even Annihilator is absurdly long range here, and then get away with high stress mag clamp or retractable profile. Things got too hot, get Agni and Auto Cooler to get free instant cool down, not every Tokugawa build needs to throw risk calculation completely aside, you won't need to move much with the sheer range anyway. And that's generally how artillery Tokugawa works, just throw all in on range, or firepower. Either way, hope that the enemies all die out before they get too close, or just get back up for just in case scenarios. Due to artillery toku vulnerability at close range, people tends to invest in systems that do not contribute to range or firepower in these builds, let's talk about the artillery defender builds first. This is Champagne Supernova, a displacer Tokugawa, because of course there's going to be one, it's even perfectly designed for it with deep well heat sink around to absorb that massive 10 heat. RPG is also a good loading weapons for Tokugawa, due to its sheer massive blast radius, you can do a lot of damage with it, and of course, it also comes with a blink shield so it can chill out in its own space-time bubble, maybe with an ally or two. Here's Man in the High Castle, a dual vulture rifle Tokugawa to snipe the hell out of things, with jump jet and plenty of defense tools to take cover at a high vantage point. Enclave support shield is also very good at doing shield thing on allies without obstructing your view. Or if you are more worried about tech attack, get ice out drone since you won't be hacking when you are spending all your time shooting. This is unit SD-01, a loading weapon favored Tokugawa with missile rack, hand cannons, and of course, RPG. Roland gives plenty of damage for these weapons, and they hurt a lot. All these loading weapons are also helpful because Tokugawa by its nature wants to stabilize more often anyway, so might as well reload these weapons. And finally, it's not a defender Toku without going a little on the offensive side, with dual Vorpal gun to protect its allies. These two Vorpal guns, thanks to external batteries and Toku's traits, have up to 20 goddamn range, at this point you want people to shoot your allies so your counter fire will obliterate them. Anyway, these are the artillery defender Tokugawa builds, which to be honest, aren't really a big fan of defense with how much firepower they are packing, those defensive systems are honestly more for themselves. Anyway, let's move on to the artillery controller builds, of which there are three. Heat Haze, is an artillery Tokugawa that likes to move around thanks to Kai bioplating and flicker field, having invisibility really helps out a Toku in surviving. Dual burst launcher even reduces enemy's accuracy in anything, and more heat on enemy is always good, and even if burst launcher doesn't deal much damage on its own, thanks to Toku and all the bonus damage, it can melt through mech in one shot. Stormbringer lets you knock people whenever you want, and Stun Crown is just painful to anything that gets too close to you. Crouching Monarch, Hidden Toku, is a hacker Tokugawa, with 2 Hor OS system for control or defense, False Idol is really good when your enemy has bad systems. But to make sure you can't get hit at all, deploy Hive Drone and hide in the cloud, Infiltrator punishes anyone that finds you out, and all the Sharanga missiles hurt very badly with the extra bonus damage. Toku Wawahoginate, is a heat fall OC loop Tokugawa with a warp rifle to teleport enemy from half a map away anywhere, with Accelerate to bring them even closer to wherever you want them to be. Of course, Accelerate can be used to aid you or your allies too by moving you or them. These artillery controller builds, while not as crazy as previous controller builds of other frames, are still very good at controlling the battlefield due to the sheer firepower of Tokugawa. And finally, one last build, the artillery support. This is fully automated luxury gay space Tokugawa, because what else are you supposed to call a Tokugawa build with three auto guns? You basically have all the actions available to you because the auto guns are indeed, fully automated killing weapons. Throw in Sisyphus to manipulate chances, held image for even more lock on, or just use Lotus projector to keep hidden enemy not so hidden. It just works for so many different situations. And that's truly, all 40 of the Tokugawa builds, Thank you to all the submitters who have sent in their submissions for this episode, thank you for reminding me just how crazy Tokugawa builds are and could be. Anyway, here's the topic for the next episode, this is gonna be a fun one, with everything done, I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some coffee, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.